we're gathering today before the State Decommissioning Oversight Board, who knows that we don't want Holtec to start dumping that one million gallons. They say that they're planning to do it over four months. They announced it mid-June that they're going to do this mid-September. My name is Ellen Weininger. I'm Director of Educational Outreach at Grassroots Environmental Education. Last year, Governor Hochul stated that every New Yorker deserves access to clean, safe, and affordable drinking water. And we agree. And that's why it makes no sense that Governor Hochul has been silent and has yet to sign the Save the Hudson bill. Well, meantime, Holtec is getting ready to dump over one million gallons of radioactive waste into the Hudson River. I am Jim Creighton. I am uh, the deputy supervisor here in the town of Cortland, one of the councilmen. And uh, here at Town Hall tonight, we are hosting the um, New York State's decommissioning, uh, New Indian Point Decommissioning Oversight Board. Um, tonight's um, purpose is mainly for public comment. The last decommissioning board did not have uh, time in their agenda to have the public speak. So tonight, I hope um, the New York State officials and the people on the decommissioning board will be able to hear the public. Um, that's really what we're here for. We really want to hear what the people have to say. And we know how passionate people are right now to keep the tritiated radiological water from being dumped in the Hudson River. The leader, Anishinaabeg leader, Lucien Wabanonak said, water is life because water gives life. So it's important to realize that we're not the only beings here. We have the, uh, the fish and the birds and even uh, other animals that many people don't seem to care about. And no one's talking about how the radiation is going to affect them. I mean, to me, it's like saying, I don't care, like a coal miner saying, I don't care about this canary. If that canary doesn't do well, that coal miner knows they're not going to be able to stay around very long. So if even the uh, multicellular or single cell creatures in the, in the Hudson River, which is their home, if they don't do well, then eventually we're not going to do well either. The Hudson is special for so many reasons. It's, uh, you know, it's a home to zillions of living creatures. The reason the Hudson is such a valuable habitat is because it's tidal. Unlike rivers that just flow from the mountains to the sea, the, ri the Hudson River for 155 miles between New York's New York Harbor and Troy, north of Albany, is a tidal estuary. And those tides, two tides a day, keep all the nutrients up in suspension, the, the, the sediment stays up in suspension, the sediment is carried into the marshes every day and then drops out and and nourishes the marshes. The marshes become habitat for, for the, the small fish that are, that are hatched, that are born in the Hudson. Every spring, Atlantic sturgeon come up the Hudson, striped bass, herring, American eel, American shad, and blue crab. The Hudson is a, a, um, it's a, it's a machine of life. Oh yes, I'm here today at the Cortland Town Hall. I'm here to protest the uh, Hotec, a company that was employed by Indian Point, who decided that they're going to dump nuclear waste into the Hudson River. As we know, Hudson River serves many communities in New York State, and many communities are going to be subjected to this pollution and tritonium in their waters, which can lead to cancers. So I'm disgusted, and I think she needs to sign this bill. If not, she needs to be voted out of office by the voters of this state. Hey everyone, my name is Vanessa Gudello. I am here uh, as a representative for Westchester Alliance for Sustainable Solutions in support of our effort asking Governor Hochul to do her job and sign this, the bill to ensure that radioactive wastewater does not get dumped into our Hudson River. We are here today at the Cortland Town Hall and I am completely appalled as a former Peekskill City Council member and as an environmental advocate as one of many organizations that are here in support of this effort against Holtec to ensure that our community 
communities do not continue to be uh, sacrifice zones to ensure that our quality of life and our environment doesn't continue to be c contaminated. Um, we're, we're just so frustrated that Governor Hochul has not yet signed this bill. Uh, many of uh, the um, interest groups that are our environmental advocates have suggested that we put a moratorium in place and or that we wait at least 12 and a half years before anything should go into the Hudson. So at least the um, tritium has uh, reduced by half its potency. I'm Santosh Nandabal and I'm a community organizer, Food and Water Watch, Stop Pool Tech Coalition. So I run that organizing arm. That's over 138 groups that are dedicated to keeping radioactive waste from getting dumped in the Hudson River. And that's why we're here outside the town of Cortland today, where over 100 activists came together demanding Governor Hochul sign the Save the Hudson bill, legislation that's got bipartisan support, passed unanimously in the Senate, bipartisan supermajority in the Assembly. You got people from the far left, far right, everything in between that are saying don't dump toxic radioactive waste in the Hudson River. It is a black and white issue. We just came out of a, a, a quote-unquote public hearing, um, which is very silly. The decommissioning oversight board uh, is, is using some, some silly tactics with some premeditated questions uh, and premeditated answers. But we know who the real decision maker is. It's Governor Hochul, and we're here to make sure that she steps up, signs that bill, and we go back to the business of restoring the river. So we're here for a public comment period for the decommissioning oversight board. I'm just so thankful the public has turned out. Regardless of which side of this issue people are on, public engagement is the key. And there are dozens and dozens of people here. Hundreds of questions have been posted on the website that hopefully a lot of them will be addressed tonight. So public engagement, that's what it's all about. Thank you all for your interest. Why then was it necessary for the state to appoint a resident inspector? And why also has the state itself taken exception to a number of your exemptions? I would point out uh, to the NRC reps that back in the 1960s, I believe it was, when I was a young engineer, I was responsible for the licensing of what became the Donald Cook plant in Michigan. I spent a number of hours sitting across the table from the NRC staff, and I can assure you it was not a pleasant experience. What chemicals and radioisotopes are present in the spent fuel casks, and what plans does the NRC have to fund replacement or repairs of spent fuel casks if needed? In the event replacement or repair of the spent fuel casks are required, who's responsible for the cost? Like I said, the inspection reports are publicly available. Uh, as are all in NRC inspection, uh, inspection reports, uh, unless they're pertaining to security, are available on the, uh, on the NRC website or now. So there are tons of questions that need to be answered before anything happens. And one of the biggest ones is we found out tonight that New York State's going to let them dump radioactive waste into the Hudson River before they even test it, before they have the results from the tests. That, to me, is the worst thing that they could possibly do. They need to know. The answer is, oh, well, we'll dump it now, and then if it's bad, we'll fix it later. That's not the way it works. We've dealt with the PCBs. We spent billions of dollars cleaning up the PCBs, the PFOAs, the PFAS chemicals, and the radio radioactive chemicals. We need to know before anything is dumped, and that's not the answer that we're getting. Yeah, I was in at the meeting and here listening to the NRC, the EPA, and a whole group of people talking about the situation, and it's very frustrating because the sense is that they just want to do this. And it felt to me like they're just going to do it no matter what, and they have all kinds of reasons why it's okay. It's not cumulative. It's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to, they're, they're, they're not going to, they're not, they're going to release it, and then they're going to test it. Can you believe that? They're going to release it and then test it after it's released. I mean, it's, it's not common sense. It's not caring for people, for humanity, for creation. And it's very frustrating. And uh, I just hope we're able to stop this. It does not look good right now. What the NRC had to say is, is a lot of it was not true. For example, they're claiming that tritium does not bioaccumulate. There's a lot of research that in indicates that it does. 
and what we're asking is, is for a moratorium and that tritium not be dumped into this river for at least two years until we can find a better alternative. The Hudson is a priceless thing for all of us. It's a priceless river and we need to stop treating it like a sewer. It, it's just a beautiful waterway and we have no right actually to put it in uh, in any kind of danger. The fact that they've been doing this for a long time doesn't even matter. It's time to stop, it's time to take care of the Hudson, and it's time to have a moratorium and no dumping of tritium in the Hudson River.